speaking to uh, Jimmy from my like, gods. How are you getting on? I'm good, good, man. You're good. A little tired. Of course, you just you just literally flown over from the US, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. How do you have the energy to sort of you know, just casually fly over to the UK for a show and then and then play some shows and go back to the states? Have you, have you got a tip? Money. For, uh... <laughs> Money gives you energy for everything. We're old, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, we've got a we've got a new generation of fans compared to when you started playing out. Like, what what are the crowds like now? Sort of. Are they any different to back in the nineties when you started? Out oh, of course, yeah. They're, well, they're a little bigger now. Mm-hmm. Um, Back in the 90s, I think uh, the genre of music we're playing was still kind of new. Mm-hmm. So, uh, just uh, it's a, I, just people are a little more informed now, that's all. Mm-hmm. You know? I understand that. It's about a year since uh, History of Nomadic Behavior came out. Yeah. Where's the time gone, you know? It seems COVID. COVID. Sitting at fucking home. <laughs> seems a little bit more experimental to my ears. Um, have you got, like... Are you working on new material for I Hit God that's continuing in that path? Or? Yeah, well, I mean, it's the first record as a four piece. Mm-hmm. So, we, you know, we, there's some songs that we had written that we kind of, we dumped that didn't work as a four piece, that worked as a five piece. But uh, it's just, we're still fit, finding ourselves, you know, each, each record's just a progression of the band and where our head's at at that time. And, and we were doing a lot of practicing up at the room and started getting a little more intricate with our songwriting as compared to before. And, uh, nice it's nice for us you know it's always challenging to become better as a band you know? yeah of course of course and um i mean you're more clearly living than say 20 years ago how does that affect the band dynamic like what are working relationships like now sort of? uh, it's all good i mean you know yeah. known each other forever so you know. uh, on um takers need for pay- paying classic album there was a uh, Song titles like Sister Fuck and White Neighbor. Like, do you think a band could write that and get away with this in the current climate? I mean, it was all sarcasm and being stupid anyway, but yeah. you know, it's, it's just, I mean, yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> not without not without catching a shitload of backlash, you know, and, uh, you know, like I said, those titles were fucking jokes, man. Of course, of I mean, course. we were a sarcastic bunch of assholes. And, <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, you, it's like, it's 30 years ago, dude. No, so, of course. It seems yeah, like, I don't. I don't think a band. I don't think today would be. It would be put up with. You know, and it shouldn't be. So. No, I guess like um, when there was the backlash against Phil in 2016 for the. Uh, he deserved it. Uh, he deserved it. Well, uh, do you see yourself as more of a guitarist or a drummer with uh, your down credentials? Well, I've been playing a lot more guitar than I have drums, so mm-hmm. I'm at a, about two weeks and get home. And we're doing some down shows, so. It, we, at least still doing stuff, you know, it's just a little sporadic, but, uh, I, so I guess the dance would be a guitar player right now, you know. Oh, of course, of course. I got a drum kit at home and I play, you know. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to be involved with something a little more, uh, busier than down with drums, you know, just because I, I really love playing drums, man. No, of course. You, 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 Drummer first, you know. So. It was your first instrument, yeah. So that's interesting. Do you ever kind of... You know, get in touch with Pepper or Kirk and be like, you know, I've got some riffs and what's going on with down behind the scenes at the moment? It's just not much right now. I mean, no. um, Pat's the only one that's not really doing anything. Kirk mm-hmm. and Pep and Phil, everybody's kind of busy right now with their other other prospective projects. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I talk to Pat all the time and, you know, Kirk, Pat, you know, I mean, we talk, you know, but just uh, we're supposed to be doing a, a cover song EP and, uh, it's just a matter of getting in the room and hammering it out, you know. Yeah. We've already got like 90% of the songs picked mm-hmm. that we're gonna do, so it should be really cool and interesting. As a, you know, as a, I'm a fan of Down as well, so yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's gonna be cool, you know. It's gonna be really cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. What's um, what's New Orleans like for up and coming bands? I mean, in, in, you know, when I Hate God were coming through, there were all kinds of bands that you know we look back on in 2022 as you know quite well established influential bands what what's the modern craft like in new orleans at the moment it's good it's young um there's uh there's always been a good good strong music scene in new orleans you know it's like new orleans keeps biting its head off with places to play mm-hmm. you know it's like it, you find a good club and then something happens you know and, it, and and you know with underground music it's all about having a place a venue to do it so a venue that everyone's comfortable with and that bands sound good in, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of different factors. I'm, I'm older, but, you know, when you're a kid, you don't give a fuck. No. You know, you set up and play next to those kegs, you know, it doesn't matter. Cool. But uh, New Orleans scene is always thriving. It's always young. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
I don't get out as much as I used to, but um, but I hear through friends and stuff, you know, everything's still thriving, man. Still going, you know. <laughs> it's good to know. It's good yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who's your riff lord? I mean, there's got to be a few. But who's no. my riff lord? Yeah. Willie Nelson, man. <laughs> Listen to his records, dude. Listen to his old records. They fucking ripped off like a motherfucker, man, <laughs> on an acoustic, you know. Stay all night, stay a little longer. Check that song out. <laughs> Sabbath before Sabbath, man. Sabbath before Sabbath. Yeah. What, what about the I Hate God riffs? What's, in your opinion, the heaviest I Hate God riff? Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't, not Sister Fuck. <laughs> uh, just, uh, you know, the first record's kind of heavy, but it's yeah. ignorantly heavy. You know, like we barely knew how to play, so playing three chords in a riff was a big deal to, us, to me, you know. Like, and uh, and now it's more about notes and you know, yeah. ma- I'm I'm really tripping out on major key. Yeah. You know, mixing major key and like a doomed out band. So know, to me, it's kind of cool, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, like if the Almond Brothers showed up and played on a Sabbath record, you know. <laughs> Just uh, always, like I said earlier, just always trying to challenge ourselves, you know. And so it's the way to do it. Yeah, it's you know. a, well, it keeps it fresh for you. You don't want to be If not, if no. not, you're going to be bored, dude. What's the point, then? What's the point? Yeah, yeah. You're here yeah, You're here as even as a human being to progress. Yeah, of course. Well, hello. Uh, thanks for your time, Jimmy. It's been you're good welcome. to meet you. Thank you, man. Uh, any last words for us? Fuck life. <laughs>